You know, I don't normally like to talk about serious topics on this channel, but there's a serious problem with video games that we need to discuss, or else it's just only going to get worse. So you know what, I'm just gonna say it. <sighs> How come Nintendo's never made a Mario Cigarette All-Stars? There's been like 70 games with this Italian, and in none of them can you pack your own tobacco. But also, FPS games are currently suffering through a terrible addiction. They're addicted to fentanyl. Nah, I'm just kidding, that's your cousin in two years. The video is about assault rifles. Yes, assault rifles, the FPS game's favorite weapon. If you've played a shooter game, there's probably like a 99% chance that it has an assault rifle, and also a probably equal chance that it has like 20 of them. They are omnipresent, they are everywhere. You can't go outside without pushing 30 assault rifles when you open the door. And this is the part where I'm supposed to say that I hate this, but ever since I was cursed by the clown wizard, I can't hate things. Here, Chad, have a balloon dog. Don't you dare pop that, by the way. But honestly, even if I was currently capable of hating things, I don't necessarily know that I would. I'm not exactly happy with it, but I don't inherently hate assault rifles as a concept. I just don't like them having such an iron grip on modern arsenals. I liked it back when games were A, a little bit more varied with their guns, having lots more crazy shit like rocket launchers and laser guns, etc, 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 like 10 times on this channel now. But also, back when your workhorse weapon was not an assault rifle, but was a shotgun, which during the infancy of shooters was the case. The prime examples of this are probably Doom and Quake. In each of these games, the shotgun is your real first gun. Technically, the first gun in Doom is the pistol, but the pistol is almost completely useless, and the first real gun you're actually going to use for something and want is a shotgun. And id knew this when they made Quake, and they just gave you the shotgun outright. But as we all know, times change, glaciers melt, your friend Jerry reveals he's actually a Martian spy, and games go in new directions. And that's kind of a shame, because I kind of preferred it when shotguns were the frontrunners. Unfortunately, however, we have entered the age of assault rifles, and in fact, we've been in that age for quite some time. And it doesn't seem like that's going to change anytime soon. And sometimes I look up into the night sky and I say, if only, if only there was some extremely old game completely incapable of changing or modernizing itself under threat of scrutiny from its rabid fans. If only there was some shooter that was like the old ways, that was outdated and frustrating to deal with. Oh my God, is that it? No, my eyes deceive me. There it is, the perfect example. Starfield. Yes, Team Fortress 2. I don't even need to begin to introduce this game. You already know what this is, you're probably actively playing it, but one thing that I find genuinely quite good about Team Fortress 2 is how deeply connected it is to its roots. Through seven years of torturous human experimentation, historians have been able to prove that Team Fortress 2 has a direct link to Quake. And as such, shotguns are the main weapon of Team Fortress 2, not assault rifles like is the case for many other games. And out of the nine characters in the game, four of them have a shotgun as a major part of their kit, and Heavy has one too. And this is rather interesting. So interesting, in fact, that if you were particularly handsome, you could probably make an entire video on it. But before I start milking this topic for $38, we need to ask ourselves, what is an assault rifle? And I think it's this. Oh, that's clearly and what makes one of these so much better than the other? And personally, the skinny of that answer comes down to a few basic things. The kind of shooting that it promotes, the penalties for missing, how these weapons typically interact with reloading, and the range at which these two weapons typically reward you. And also how cool the gun is, because if the gun's really cool, you should go tell people at the TSA about it. You should tell them you have a gun. You should go and tell them. First off, let's identify an assault rifle. We have to know what we're talking about here. An assault rifle in a video game is typically a weapon that is automatic by default, but usually has some kind of a selector switch that lets you change the fire mode to either single shot or maybe burst. However, for the most part, automatic is going to be the default and most commonly used style. These guns are usually pretty accurate, though typically they're supposed to be used at a close or medium range. If the game has an aim down sights mechanic, which more or less kind of followed the assault rifle as far as trends go, then if you're not aimed down sights, the gun is going to spray wildly all over the place, and once you are aimed down sights, it's going to become much more accurate. Assault rifles also hold a huge amount of bullets. You can often see them trying to mimic make the actual capacity of real-life rifles or real-life magazines, but now that games allow you to modify your guns in a hundred different ways, you can see all kinds of different numbers. The sweet spot is 30, though. These rounds are also reloaded all at once in a magazine. And finally, ever since this mechanic's inception in Call of Duty 4, most games have followed the design path that assault rifles cannot harm frogs. You need a billhook for that. All of this combines to make assault rifles extremely versatile and rather easy to use. They're your workhorse weapon because they're useful in the most situations.
conditions. They deal a healthy amount of damage, they shoot pretty fast, they're usually pretty controllable and pretty accurate, and they have a lot of bullets to hit with. And this is where the crux of a lot of my problems come with. But let's not get ahead of ourselves because that watch time doesn't make itself. Let's now meet our other contender, shotguns. Shotguns are historically called shotguns because the shot bullet goes, but in addition to the shit in Now, most of you probably know how a shotgun in a video game works, but just in case anybody here is a deep learning algorithm, a shotgun in a video game is pretty simple. You hit the button and it shoots out a big spray of attacks, usually like 9 or 10 or more. In Team Fortress's case, it's 9. This spray inherently means that these weapons are typically very low range, because most of the bullets won't hit their target. This is something you should consider if you're going to bring one to try to hunt down the Lich D.B. Cooper. Depending on what era the game you're playing comes from, shotguns will either deal a decent amount of damage or an insane amount of damage, typically as a way to balance their low range and low fire rates compared to the rest of the arsenal. As games have gone on, shotguns have been relegated to the masters of close range niche, by which I mean that these days shotguns are typically viciously powerful at close range, but beyond that they're pretty much useless, since their place as the generalist weapon has been, well, replaced. Shotguns in Call of Duty, for example, which is a pretty big front runner of this design, can deal upwards of four times the amount of damage they need to to get a kill. Oftentimes meaning that you don't really need to be that accurate to get a kill, because you have so much extra damage on the table. This is yet another casualty of the focus on assault rifles, but we'll talk about this later. Damn it! Shotguns in video games are also often manual action. Usually you have to shoot and then pump the gun, which takes a break from your ability to fire, and then shoot again. You also typically have a limited magazine capacity. A lot of shotguns will have a single digit amount of ammo before you have to start reloading, and also you reload each shot individually. You don't reload them through a magazine. Though obviously, again, as times have changed, there are a lot of shotguns in a lot of games that look a lot more like an assault rifle, adopting either semi-automatic or fully automatic fire modes and large capacities. So with all of this said, what's the problem? Well, the problem, at least in my opinion, is that assault rifles are just not fun. Again, there's nothing technically inherently wrong with the idea. There are a lot of games that have a fun assault rifle. Or at least, I think there are, because God knows I can't fucking think of one. Maybe CS, with its AK-47, there aren't that many noteworthy assault rifles I can think of in games that aren't either extremely similar to something else, or is something that I only remember because it's a personal pet gun. And part of the reason for this, I think, is that assault rifles are extremely derivative of one another. Not just within the arsenal, of each game, but also between games. Which is not necessarily unique, a lot of guns and games are like that, but it's not just that they're derivative, it's also that they don't have anywhere near the top speed of the USS Chris Chan, but also they're just kind of simple and kind of boring. As far as the mechanics of shooting goes, an assault rifle is incredibly simple. It's just a basic tracking weapon. And tracking in FPS games is about the easiest kind of shooting you can do. It is quite literally just see a target and follow them with your cursor. That's all it is. Tracking weapons are almost always automatic. That's what makes them able to track a target. They can continually damage and hit them as they move. This is unlike a shotgun, for example, which I like to call a twitch weapon. A twitching weapon is a gun that can shoot, but only some of the time, for whatever reason. This this fundamentally changes how you, an imperfect human, operate these weapons. Because tracking guns have such a high rate of fire, they're usually pretty lenient with misses. Humans aren't perfect at tracking things with their hand-eye coordination, that's just a fact. Except for Magic Johnson, but we're just not gonna talk about him. These weapons are designed to account for the times where you're just slightly off. And on its own, that's fine, that's not a problem unlike malaria. The problem is everything that has happened around assault rifles, the changes in the fundamentals of the genre. The weapon isn't the problem, it's the ecosystem that the weapon now exists in. Assault rifles are kind of just a blank slate to put game mechanics on. On their own, they're just a very simplistic weapon to shoot, which has a bunch of bullets, and is overall very lenient. However, as games have slowed down and not meaningfully sped up, using assault rifles has become extremely boring. Let's compare tracking and twitching, the two major methods of aiming for these kinds of weapons. They're both pretty simple. Twitching is just holding onto a target for as long as you can shoot, or until you can't see them anymore, and twitching is shooting at the target, then taking a break from shooting for whatever reason, and then trying to reacquire acquire that target and shoot again. And it's a good thing I didn't accidentally misspeak and say twitching twice or else my cursed amulet would make my hands explode. Anyway. Now this is where I'm supposed to reassure you. I'm supposed to say both of these kinds of shooting are fine, they're both equal, that everything is right with the world, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat it with you. Chad, your swordsmanship is mediocre at best. Jokes aside, these two kinds of shooting are not equal. Personally, I think that the latter is far better. Now, against fast targets, I actually think both of these are totally legitimate and are a lot of fun. Now that being said, uh, games don't really do fast anymore. They pretend to sometimes, but they don't really do fast the way they used to. And even in the quote unquote faster games, a lot of the times nowadays, whenever you're actually getting into the nitty gritty of shooting another person, you're both just sitting there, aim down sights, waddling side to side, shooting at each other. At a rate that would make slow Celine just thoroughly embarrassed for both of you. 
my 13 to 17 year old demographic is not doing great. And as if I needed to tell you this, tracking a very slow thing is not hard and it's not fun. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about you with the finals. I'm talking about you, Battlefield. I'm talking about you, peeping dorm room manager. This place is assault rifles in a particularly spicy position where all they do is track things and all the things they're trying to track are extremely slow. And to fix this, FPS game designers have decided to do absolutely nothing. This change in trends is what has made developers try to make shooting more interesting on the shooter's side rather than through movement. Mechanics like bullet travel, bullet drop, recoil, etc. are done A to mimic the function of real guns because that's just what we have to do now, and also B to try to make shooting more interesting for slow targets. And overall, they actually work very well. Though I will say, some games don't take recoil management maybe as seriously as they should because there are a lot of shooters I've played, and I'll admit I'm not the best player of these games, but I've so far had pretty decent success against most enemies just by pulling down and maybe slightly in one direction if I have to. Like, you know, I'm still a relatively casual player, I don't have a bucket under my chair or anything. But yeah, overall, these mechanics are good, they make shooting more interesting. They're a serviceable stopgap in the period between now and when game developers in the future decide that players having fun is actually more valuable than trying to fire all of those secretaries that wouldn't sleep with you. However, even with recoil etc etc, shooting at a slow target is not very difficult, especially if the recoil isn't extreme like it is in Counter-Strike, for example. This is where Twitch shooting has an advantage, in my opinion. Tracking a slow target isn't fun. Tracking a fast target is. Twitch shooting against either a slow or fast target is always fun. As an example, I'd like to bring up Fistful of Frags. Now, Fistful of Frags is not for the weak. No, Fistful of Frags is for burly, barrel-chested fooders and oafish gamer tards like us. And that's because Fistful of Frags has an extremely punishing arsenal of very slow, single-action or otherwise manual action guns. It's filled with things like single action revolvers, lever action rifles, pump shotguns, bows, and this really weird crusty game I found in my dad's office called Custer's Rev. I think it's a racing game. Every single gun in this game deals a lot of damage, but has to take a break after every shot, meaning that misses can be catastrophic. There's no liberal fart baby machine guns to save you here. And it highlights how well this kind of shooting can work against pretty much any target, because Fistful of Frags is incredibly slow. While there is some movement, a lot of it isn't incredibly crazy. It's not like Titanfall or Quake, where you're gonna be running around at mock speed, but it's still fun because every single shot matters and every single miss is a huge problem. It's not missing like, oh, I missed seven shots out of my 30 round magazine, but I was still able to kill the enemy. It's more like, oh shit, I missed my shot. I am now losing this engagement and I have to come up with some kind of a plan that keeps me alive while I rechamber my gun. And this is why twitch shooting is fun against slow targets. When you only have one shot, even tiny incremental changes in position can be the difference between a miss and then a lengthy reload or a hit. These gaps also provide for opportunities for counterplay and for the player themselves to do stuff. Now, of course, this only works if you're playing a game where you can do stuff, but you know, just give me a minute, okay? That's step three of the four-part plan. Step one, we're gonna raid Ariana Grande Spice Cabinet. Step two, we are going to vanquish the dark worshippers of Baal. Third, we're gonna make video games that are fun to play again. And four, we're all gonna subscribe to Kaluka, okay? <laughs> These delays and the fact that every weapon in this game has a low magazine capacity compared to pretty much any modern military shooter means that each shot counts more. You don't even lose out on the benefits of some of the mechanics of other games. For example, a recoil mechanic will inherently affect an automatic weapon that shoots more often than it will with a slow weapon like a shotgun. If it recoils after every shot and you shoot more frequently, you're going to recoil more frequently. Trust me, I'm Dr. Science, or at least that's what you should tell the police if they ask. Sure, an assault rifle might recoil more, because because of the higher rate of fire, but you can also just make recoiling more intense for slower guns. There's not really as equal of a trade-off. The openings between shots also give you an opportunity to make mistakes, or to quickly come up with a plan on the fly, in addition to these other benefits. And all of this also ties very well into the punishments related to reloading. Now, I made another much worse video on this, but the basic gist of it is that modern day reloading is just not fun in video games. The point of reloading is simple, it's supposed to be inconvenient. You're supposed to only have so many bullets before you have to reload, and you have to make a hard choice about reloading early to be able to have a full mag for your next engagement, or keep trucking along with the magazine that you currently have in case there's an imminent threat. Here, this fake image that links Gabe Newell to the Adderall shortage should explain everything. The first thing that makes reloading not inconvenient in most games is that you just reload the entire magazine all at once, again, because you have an assault rifle. And the second thing is that in a lot of games, reloading is no longer actually that long. You can store a ton of bullets in your mag and then just swap that out whenever you need to. And unless the game is tracking how many bullets you have in each mag, that means you usually are also allowed to get a 
full magazine as long as you have more than 30 or whatever it is bullets. This is again unlike shotguns, which typically have to reload each shell individually, meaning that once again there's a tie to how much shooting and how much missing you can do, and then how much reloading you have to do to fix it. It also makes reloading a lot longer because you have to go through an animation for every single bullet. I also think that this is just more interesting to do as a player. It allows you to not only decide when you want to reload, but also how much you want to reload. There is something to be said about the all or nothing nature of reloading an assault rifle in a lot of games, but when you don't make that process extremely inconvenient, or at the very least fun to actually do, by having something like reloading mechanics, which is for some reason something only like Gears of War and Gungeon have done, and regardless I think having to go piece by piece like you do with shotguns is just more interesting. Team Fortress 2 especially does this for a lot of different weapons in the game, grenade launchers, rocket launchers, etc. The whole game has a focus on burst damage, which is what makes shotguns a good representation for the entire arsenal. Burst damage, single shot weapons that have slow reloads, forcing you to be accurate and take the most out of your opportunities, but also forcing you to deal with crippling downtime that could make even the strongest of characters completely helpless. Lots of weapons with either spread or AoE that makes it so that even if you're not the most precise player, you can get some amount of damage, and even when you do need to be precise, you can be rewarded heavily for doing it against the right opponents. And in fact, that actually brings up my next topic, which is the kinds of precision that shotguns have versus assault rifles. Again, assault rifles are tracking weapon. They shoot one bullet a bunch of times at a single target. They have binary hit conditions. Either you hit the opponent or you don't. And this is fine. I mean, at their core, FPS games are inherently about replacing parenting for kids born after 2007 and are also about either hitting the other guy or not. But I think there's something to be said about the analog differences and hits that you get with a shotgun. With a shotgun, you can hit either one or all of the pellets, or anything in between. This is something I don't really like about Battlefield slash Call of Duty style shotguns, because they have a gigantic, massive surplus of damage, you don't actually need to be that accurate to score a kill. This is to keep up with all of the advantage that a high time to kill assault rifle has. And that's not even to mention the fact that these weapons designation as king of the close range, again usually meaning that they're an insanely powerful weapon close up, but useless everywhere else can be frustrating in two ways. It can be frustrating to have a shotgun and to be outranged most of the time, and it can also be frustrating to be in a match with a shotgun user and to get one tap just because you were close to a guy who barely had to aim his gun. Again, I think back when these weapons were the standard, it was a lot better because you were expected to be able to survive a couple of shots of these. At max health, every single character can survive at least one meat shot from even the scout, who has a better shotgun than the rest of the cast. But don't worry, they still cannot survive my hidden technique five tiger fist. This allows for a lot of different levels of skill expression in the game. Sure, you might be hitting your shots, but are you hitting meat shots? This is also dictated by the effective ranges of these weapons. Assault rifles are generally more effective out to a longer range than a shotgun is, because of the very basic fact that shotguns have bloom. In most games, assault rifles aren't necessarily as effective at a long range as they are close up, especially if you're trying to go full auto, but you can still generally do something at a very long range. If you've watched my channel a little bit, you know I'm not really the biggest fan of snipers in games, and my opinions on snipers extend to pretty much anything where you're just shooting across the whole map from another guy, especially if only one player is capable of shooting over that distance effectively. I would much rather players be up close and personal, in the nitty gritty in each other's face, moving and jumping and flying through the air. And this is the kind of gameplay that shotguns promote. This is unlike their foreign policy, in which case they promote expansionist xenophobia. Team Fortress 2 also takes this one step further. All of the fundamental advantages of shotguns apply to Team Fortress 2, but on top of that, Team Fortress 2 is also a character-based game, meaning that not only are shotguns an interesting part of the arsenal, they're also an interesting part of the class ecosystem. The obvious example is probably Heavy. Heavy eats shotguns, he eats them, he grinds them down with his gigantic teeth, his rows of teeth that he can grow multiple. First off, there's the very hard examples like Soldier versus Pyro. If you've never played Team Fortress 2, Pyro can reflect Soldier's rockets, which are his main weapon of choice. But also, if this video has made this game seem interesting to you, don't download it, it's a fucking nightmare. But also, the soldier's main weapon is a rocket launcher. Rockets are his bread and butter. He uses them to move and to deal damage. The pyro can reflect these rockets back at him and his team, which not only robs the soldier of ammo and damage, but also puts his teammates at risk. Luckily for the soldier, he also has a shotgun, which the pyro cannot reflect. Now, of course, the shotgun is nowhere near as potent as the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher can deal more damage and can also deal that damage over an area, meaning that you can deal a lot of damage to groups. But sometimes it's a sacrifice you have to make to be able to deal with a problematic pyro. 
but also there's subtler interactions as well. The focus on burst damage and the punishments for missing make it so that classes can fight each other more evenly than they really should. On paper, for example, almost no class should be able to beat a heavy. If every single character had a sustained damage weapon, almost none of them, unless they dealt an insane amount of damage, would be able to beat the heavy one-on-one. -on -one. He just has more health and deals a huge amount of damage. His numbers are simply better. The only way you could defeat him is if you contacted the secret police about his family and had them sent to the shadow prison. But because other characters use burst damage, you can play a hit-and-run style against heavy, allowing characters like even the engineer, somebody who's about as weak as a character can be in combat, to defeat the heavy if they use the correct strategy. The punishments for missing also provide characters the ability to punch up. If a scout is shooting at you, but he misses, you have a huge opportunity to be able to return fire, and getting that one extra shot in can be the difference between winning and losing. This is what I liked about Hunt Showdown and Fistful of Frags, two games with weapons that function very similar to this. Fights were tense and came down to individual shots. You had to make everything count, you weren't just standing there slowly walking to the side mag dumping every enemy. And I think that if we just conveniently ignore the effects of nostalgia and the weird cultish obsession that PC gamers have with Valve, this is one of the things that makes Team Fortress 2 so enduringly fun. It's just always gonna be fun to play Scout. And Scout is kind of a bare-bones representation of what makes Team Fortress 2 Team Fortress 2. It's fun to have to make your shots count, to have to deal with genuinely important reloading, to have to move well, and to have to deal with the other nine classes and how they affect you. And sure, I don't mind assault rifles. I don't mind a post-Call of Duty shooter. I don't mind pointing at the enemy, holding down to deal with my recoil, and watching their health bar explode. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. I mean, if there were, it probably wouldn't be as popular as it is. But for my money, I would rather take a shotgun in a game in most cases. And I think that nicely wraps up this video. Thank you all very much for watching. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you know what to do. You're an adult, I think, or at least a teenager in most cases. You probably know how to click on my channel and then go see my other videos. I'm tired. I'm tired of having to of having to do these stupid end of the video fucking tutorials for nobody. Like everyone knows how to subscribe. You don't need to tell them how to fucking subscribe.